Hi guys, this is Sai Kumar Kortiwada. In this video, we will learn about life cycle hooks in Angular of a component. To understand this, I have explained about the interfaces in my previous video of a TypeScript. Please watch that video before continuing this. Let me quickly jump into Visual Studio Code. Here, already we have created a basic application for Angular and now in this, I'll try to explain a basic lifecycle hooks and what are the different names we are using, what are the different interfaces we are using for that lifecycle hooks. And in the upcoming videos, when it comes to a particular scenarios, we'll use this lifecycle hooks and we'll understand deeply about this lifecycle hooks. So first lifecycle hook is about ng on changes. So let's understand about ng on changes. To understand about ng on changes, we can use a interface called as on changes and this is my interface and for this interface there is a defined method called as ng on changes so ng on changes is the first lifecycle hook which will be triggered in a component so let me use ng on changes is the first lifecycle and the second point to remember is this can be triggered only whenever you are using an input output decorator that means a parent child communication when there is an input output decorator used in a component so whenever there is a change in the value of that input and output decorators then automatically this will be re-triggered so that is also one point to remember we will discuss about input output decorator in the upcoming videos and we'll understand more about this ng on changes so here the point to be noted when there is a change in input or output bindings then this will be re-triggered it will be re-triggered or re-executed and now this ng on changes let me use console.log of i am in ng on changes and we are not using any input output decorator in my component so this will never be triggered and let's go to the second one there is one more interface called as on init so in this on init it has a default method which should be overridden in our component is ng on init so if you are not trying to override this particular method then we will be getting an error on this app component if you comment this you can go and check here incorrectly implements interface on init property ng on init is missing in the type app component so whenever we are implementing this particular interface it's our responsibility to override that particular implementation in our component so from here what we understand is ng on init is an method which is defined as a mandatory method for this on init so now this will be triggered only once after the ng on changes is triggered or if ng on changes not triggered also this ng on init will trigger at one time so let me use a console log called as on init and let's understand the points of this ng on init so ng on init this is specifically used for on load logics so whenever there is an on load happening to our component if you want to perform some logic over it like a get request when you want to have a http request you can do here or any of the assignments we can do here whenever you are using a reactive forms we can create our reactive forms over ng on in it so this is specifically used for on load logics and this will be called only once the component is loaded so for example if we reload the application on this component again this ng on init will call but will never call in the upcoming iterations or in the upcoming life cycles so this can be called only one time whenever it is loaded either we have ng on changes or not so it will be loading only one time so this is about ng on init we will learn about ng on init in the upcoming classes in more deep let's understand one more life cycle called as do check there is something called as on do check so there is a interface called as do check these all are coming from our angular slash core and if you see here we have a ng do check which is missing in our component let's write our logic for this ng do check and this will be called whenever there is a change happening in our binding that may be a two-way binding that may be a property binding any binding whatever the changes happens in our html logic that bindings will reflect our ng do check and it will be reiterated this particular logic so console.log of do check and this will be called in two scenarios one is on load and the second one is whenever there is a change happen whenever there is a change 
happens to our component and now let me go with the other one the other one is something like after content in it so this is something like an uh, interface again and this will have ng after content in it and this will be called whenever our content is loaded so here the content means there is a concept called as content projection in angular we will be seeing in the upcoming videos but now let's understand what is this content projection content projection is something like whenever we are writing a h1 tag and whatever the data we are writing in between this that also comes under the content projection we are projecting our content onto that particular element that element may be a custom component or maybe an html inbuilt component so such type of components will be loaded and that whenever that is loaded that will call ng after content in it so let's write a console here and this is content in it and now what the scenarios we will be covering in this is whenever you want to change some logics when the content projection changed this will be called only once called only once after do check and will ignore for next upcoming iterations so for updating the next upcoming iterations also what you can do is you can use something like after content checked so here we will be having one more interface method called as ng after content checked whenever there is a change happening to your do check it automatically triggers this so let me write console.log of content checked and this will be called in two cases immediately after content in it and the second scenario is whenever our do check is called so whenever the do check or the content projection content is changed then automatically this will be called and there is one more interface or a lifecycle hook called as after view in it so this will be something like after the view is initialized onto our dom so ng after view in it this will be called only once so console.log of this is after view in it it indicates that our view has been instantiated onto the dom and now if you want to do some dom operations on the load of a particular component then you can use this placeholder to you write your logic so this will be immediately executed after first content checked completion so it will be called immediately after the first ng after content checked and also it will be called only once called only once and also there is one more point to remember do the operations on the dom when the component is loaded only such cases we can use this after view in it and there is one more interface called as after view checked so this is also called every time whenever there is a change happen in the do check and this is having an interface called as ng after view checked and this will be called every time where there is a change in the do check after view checked and here what i can do is it will be called immediately after execution of after view in it for the first time and then from the second time it will be executed after content checked is called so how many times the content checked will be loaded that many times again it will reiterate and executes ng after view checked to make it simple don't use this ng after view checked and ng after content checked for your heavy logics so if you are performing a lot of logics in this particular life cycles it creates a performance issue so it is a rare life cycles which we will be using in our application and that should not have more logic because every time whenever we change something on the ui it will be affecting do check as well as after view checked as well as content checked these three life cycles will be triggered so these are the precious life cycles to make our performance more we should not use these particular life cycles for performing a heavy logic something like http request or we are not doing some sorting or pagination such type of stuff we should not do over this life cycle hooks it is a recommended way and now the last life cycle is something like on destroy so whenever the component is destroying then this will be called and here we mostly focus on the cleanups for example if you are having a subscriptions and if you want to unsubscribe them you can use this place and if you are connecting to some web sockets 
and if you want to destroy them you can use them in this ng on destroy so this life cycle is mainly used for cleanups on destroy this will be called only once and called before component is destroyed all cleanups can be done here so let me save this and go to the browser let's understand this how what are the different types of lifecycle hooks has been called actually speaking the first one should be ng on changes but in this case we don't have any input decorator and output decorator in our component so that's why ng on changes is not called we'll see in the upcoming videos when it will be called and coming to on in it it is called only once if you see whole lifecycle it is not called any time and coming to do check it is checking our component for the first time and whenever the content Content is initialized then it will call content in it whenever the content is checked it will be using this content check the lifecycle hook and after view in it once the DOM is loaded this will be called and once the DOM is loaded and it is checked this is called now the case is if we have an input field and if we are having an ng model on it if we are changing that input field what are the different life cycles will be triggered let's see that let me go here and let me go to the app module because I want to use my forms module in my component so let me import this forms module and save here let me go to the component.html let me remove this and use input field where you have a placeholder testing lifecycle and now let me go here and use some ng model ng model which is a two-way binding and let me give something like testing and this testing is an string for me so let me go to the component.ts let me declare that variable with some string type and assign empty to that let me save this and let me go to the html save this now ng model created the two-way binding between our component.ts and our component.html let me quickly go into the browser and go here and just reload so if you reload the same pattern has been called till here okay and after initialization it is checking the content content checked and content view checked so these are the three things which will be triggered always whenever there is a change in our dom so let me clear it off and let me try to hit h so if you see here i have changed something in my dom so do check is called and content check this called and after view check this called so I, whenever i create a clicked outside again these three called i'll show you again so let me clear it off reload and clear it off let me give h so it called three times i am not moving that cursor from that particular field so that is the way it is calling only three times but on moving the cursor from that input field it is generating one more event called as blur event so because of that blur event again there is a change in the dom and whenever there is a change in the dom these three particular life cycles will reiterate so let me show that i am out moving out of this input field to the browser and click here so if you see here it called three again so do check content checked and after view checked so there is a communication where the component is having a two-way binding that is the reason whenever there is a change in the ui automatically the do check and content checked and after view checked is called so here we have to remember one thing is whenever you are using any logics over this content checked and after view checked make sure you should have a conditional checks there and also it should not reiterate many times if we are reiterating many times with a lot of logic the performance will reduce and our browser may get into crash so that is the precious thing and the main note which we need to remember in these life cycles of an angular component and also there is one thing whenever the you interviewer ask you about the life cycle hooks never tell constructor because constructor is not a life cycle of an angular component it is just a oops concept where it is belongs and tightly binded to your class so whenever you have a class you will be having a constructor but it is not mandatory to use all the life cycles for a particular class and now let's understand about the constructor constructor is something which will be called before your component starts instantiating so whenever your component is getting instantiated then you will be calling the constructor what is the difference between ng on in it and constructor don't do lot of logics in your constructor constructor is just to get the dependent variables or dependent uh, values where you are doing in the ng on it for example if your ng on in it is having some set of logics to be performed on few of the pre-requisites then that pre-requisites can be 
done or can we get in our constructor or second thing is it is used for initialization just remember these two point initialization is one step which we can do in the constructor and also the required params or variables can be created here which are which can be used in our on init and also do not perform big logics here which makes our component rendering a bit slow the things whatever you want to do on the load of a page go with on in it because on in it will only take care about the dynamic content but the static content can be loaded onto your html when the constructor is loaded just to remember the static content can be loaded when the constructor is ready but whenever you want to have a dynamic content don't perform such things in the constructor don't block the constructor so that it will be giving a user experience in a good manner in the upcoming videos we will learn when to use this life cycles and exactly what could be the scenario to work with this life cycles when we are going with the different topics what are the topics which are engaged with that particular life cycles we will discuss in our upcoming videos so hope you like my explanation if you like my video like share subscribe to my channel for more updates signing off thank you